Hello everybody, this is Paul Pointy once again. Uh, last time we've been talking about the DHCP service uh, on Windows 2016. Uh, of course, I've uh, promised you that I will record a second video about the DHCP uh, with uh, more details about uh, complex things like clustering or native failover and backupping and so on. But uh, after I just uploaded this video, I realized that I've been missing some very important feature of, uh, of this uh, DHCP service, which is uh, which also needs some explanation. It, it will be uh, super scopes uh, on the Windows uh, server, right? So I would like to talk a little bit about the super scopes. And uh, I promise you that we are going back to this uh, convoluted things like clustering. But let's take a short, this will be this time very short video. Uh, let's take a look on uh, super scopes, right? All right, this time I've promised myself that I will draw something on my own. Well, we will be using uh, OpenOffice for this and uh, some uh, quite smart plugin here. Okay. Uh, what about this uh, networking, this uh, super scoping? Well, let's assume that we have a network. So let's go with a, with a, some sort of a switch here. And we've got a network here that, uh, for example, has uh, utilization 100%. Like, so uh, let's go, we'll find out that something which could be our network here. Let's, uh, for something like a cloud. Okay, let this, this cloud will be our network here. Uh, okay, it will be, uh, for example, our VLAN 1, VLAN one let's assume that it will be 10 uh, 192.168.0.0 24 bits okay uh, so it can contain 250 uh four ip addresses right uh so let's assume that we've already utilized it in 100 percent and we need uh for example 50 new devices right so our boss just told us that he bought 50 new devices that he would like to be in a villain one all right, so uh, that is a problem, right? So uh, definitely, uh, there is no no room for for those devices in this network. It's overutilized to 100%. What can we do? We can extend those uh, this network, right? So we can, for example, uh, change this network from 24 bits to 23 bits, right? So it will be able to have over 500 devices. So this will be definitely sufficient, but this makes our, uh, this makes a lot of work for us, right? And it's, uh, and it's a problem because uh, if we are talking only about the dynamic devices, there is no problem. We can deliver them then the CPU options like router and so on. It's, it doesn't really matter, right? But for the statically assigned devices, manually assigned, uh, it's definitely a problem, for example, for our service printers and uh, for, I don't know, uh, network attached storage, anything, any kind of a device that is uh, statically assigned. And he's statically uh, assigned also the mask because it's uh, IPv4 contains e, uh, IP address and a mask uh, that we will have to change those masks. Right. So manually on every of this device. Well, uh, it might be a problem. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we can come up with just a better idea. And the better idea is to create another network, right? So we will create some additional network. For example, uh, 192.168.1.024 bits. So now we will have two networks, 24 bits. So it's all, it, can, it can also can contain over 500 devices. But uh, how to connect those networks? We don't want to create two separate VLANs. Uh, because we would like to have these old devices in one network, right? So that's uh, this is the place where the super scoping comes out, comes out right? So we can uh, create the super scope based on those two networks, like and just like it would be only a one network. Oh come on, it's let's go with uh, down below. Okay, so let's we can treat those two networks as a only one network and uh, any device that is uh, from the first network or for the second network that will contact the DHCP server will be assigned an address from either this or those scope right so let's uh, let's show this uh, on the environment right now so let's remember this and sh and, and go back to the client and the, the server let's log in at first to our DHCP server oh my password is not my strongest side okay so okay we've got already this uh this uh, scope from this uh, first part of the video uh let's create the second scope new scope here uh, i will dig through quite fast my office lan 2 
Okay, start IP address 168.1. Not zero, it can't be zero. We're we talking about the delivery to the client. So it must be, be a real IP. So 1, 2, 20. Okay, so 20 IP addresses, also 24 bit networks. Uh, no exclusions. Let's just go next. No need of configuring yet. Uh, a gateway let's go ahead with the activation okay we've got now two networks but they are three separately right so these are two separate networks and we would like uh, them to be treated as one so if any the devices in a second layer will contact the DHCP server the second server can assign either IP address uh, from the first uh, scope or from the second one so we will have to create a super scope right so let's create new super scope and this super scope, let's name it VLAN, VLAN 1. This super scope will, be consi will consist two um, uh, scopes below and finish with that. Yes, uh, as you can see, two scopes has been moved to, uh, to one super scope container. And now let's check, uh, for, for example, by creating a reservation because we've got here reservation. So now uh, uh, we're expecting that the client will get an IP address 192.68.0.1, okay? So let's go to the client side and check if the IP address will be uh, delivered correctly, right? Okay, so we are now on the our client side. Let's go with the CMD and IP config, release, okay, and renew. Let's take a look on the IP address. Yes, well, we've expecting that this IP address will be assigned to the clients accordingly to our reservation with that we've got here. So uh, actually, uh, to check if it's uh, if it's working, we will have to move this reservation to the second network, right? So and then take a look if uh, the DHCP server will assign also IP address from the second network. So let's go with the delete this one and reservation. We are going to create a new reservation under that one dot one. Uh, this host uh, number and the host name will be updated this reservation name. So uh, now we will have to also acquire an MAC address here. Okay, so IP config all. Let's take those one. This time I'm quite a bit smarter. I enable the guest uh, tools inside the virtual machine, so I will be able to copy paste this. So it will be faster. Yeah. Okay. So we've got now. Uh, let's take a look once once more. Sorry. Come on. Uh, so we've got a reservation in the second network now. So uh, the PC now should uh, obtain an IP address from the second one. So let's go uh, again with a release and renew. Okay, so it's working. So this time, uh, it uh, this uh, PC acquired IP address from the second uh, second network that is a part of a super scope. So which means that these two networks uh, that are a part of the scope of a super scope are treated as a one physical network. I mean, right? So uh, uh, in fact, if we'll go back to our drawing once more. Uh, this is this is uh, no longer need to create VLANs right now uh, because those two networks can be a part of one VLAN actually right so we can deploy only one VLAN or even no VLANs it can be untucked uh, at all and uh, if a client will be plugged into the uh, port into the switch port uh, it will be deliver an IP address either from this uh, network or, or from the second one. So that is the meaning of the super scopes uh, here. And that is how it's working, actually. So when can we use um, uh, super scopes? Well, um, we are often used it, uh, of course, when we are deployed with IP addresses and we need additional one. But often in the new environments, uh, people rather use the VLANs than uh, sharing the network, sharing one medium uh, and uh, providing two networks over one media. Uh, so more often you will see this in a scenarios when uh, uh, migration is going to, to be deployed, right? So at the first we are preparing a network, 
creating a super scope so it will involve creating a new scope for example bigger one and we are making a super scope so the two networks the primary one we are migrating from and the second one for example bigger that we are migrating to and uh, we are expecting that the clients will be flow from one network to another or for example by delivering an exclusion to the first network uh, and uh, this is the most common scenario when uh, the, the super scopes are use, used, right? Uh, okay, so this is all what I had to say. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching.